to open that question May 2019, question 4B. So I'd kindly make sure you are not copying, first of all reason, then I'll give you time to take a screenshot. So you are told that Tama Limited has provided the following extract from its income statement for the year ended that first December 2017 and that first December 2018. So if the year ends on that first December, that means the year starts on 1st of January. It's 1st of January. So you have the two years, profit, before tax, income tax, income uh, profit after tax. Then we have the capital structure in quotes. We have ordinary shares of shillings 100 each, 8% redeemable preference shares of shillings 100 each, 10% convertible preference share of shillings 100 each, and then we have 10% convertible loan stock. Additional information. Part of the increase in the share capital, that's the ordinary, was due to the right issue that was made on 1st April, 2018. So can you understand that? 1st April, 2018. So that means in this case, we are evaluating year 2018. So how many months end of the year? So first of all, let's get the balance brought down. Cash uh, balance brought down. How much is the share balance brought down? You see, in this case, that, that the share transaction were given was take place in 1st April 2018. They're saying that the financial year starts on 1st January 2018. So at the beginning, so how much was the ordinary share capital? Uh -huh, we had? Hey, at the beginning, 1st January 2018, you take the balances for first, uh, that 1st December 2017. And we had 2 million. Are you together? You divide by 100. That means you had how many shares? 2 million. Are we together? Yes. It's 2. Is it 2 or 20? 20 million. 12 over 12. And the weighted share, it's all the 20 million. Then you go back to note number one. Part of the increase in the share capital, that's ordinary, was due to the right issue that was made on 1st April 2016. How many months end of the year? Nine months. Good. A shareholder was granted the right to buy one new ordinary share for every five ordinary share held at a price of 120 per share. The market price of the ordinary share before the right issue was 125. Number two, the convertible loan stock was issued on 1st July 2017. Each shillings 1,000 loan stock is convertible to 25 ordinary shares. A holder of 300 million worth of convertible loan stock exercised their rights on 1st January 20. Yes, that means you cannot adjust the first one before adjust the second one. The second one took place on 1st April, but the conversion took place on 1st January 20. That means at the end of that financial year. On 1st January 2018, we effected a conversion of loan stock. Let me read that statement again. The convertible loan stock was issued on 1st July 2017. That's previous year. Each shilling's 1,000 loan stock is convertible into 20 ordinary shares. Holder of 300 million worth of convertible loan stock exercise their rights on 1st January 20 at the beginning. So we are told that for every shilling's 1,000 of loan stock, you get how many ordinary shares? You get 25 ordinary share. And then a holder of 300 million converted. So that means we should have how many shares? 300 times 25 divided by 1,000. 25 times 0 0.3, you get how much? 
Seven point? Is seven point five? Seven point five. But it was issued on first January twenty eighteen at the beginning of the year. So that means you wait twelve over twelve, and you have seven point five. And then you see that after every share transaction, you sum up. So we have 27.5, 27.5. Now let's go back to note number one. On 1st April 2018, we effected a rights issue. How do you say that? If we have a right issue, we have two share transactions. Number one, we have those share deemed issued at full price, and we have those deemed issued at a bonus. Can we read number one again? Part of the increase in the share capital was due to the right issue that was made on 1st April 2018. That's nine months to the end of the year. A shareholder was granted a right to buy one new ordinary share for every, so let's be here. It's one for every five, and the share balance we had is 27.27.5. What do you get? Just take 27.5 divided by five. Five point? 5.5 times, then you're told that for every five uh, ordinary share held at a price of 120, those were the exercise price. But you're told that the market price of the ordinary share before the right issue was how much? So you multiply, we should 5.5 each at 120, but the market price was 120. So how many share were deemed issued at full price? 5.5.28. And then how many months at the end of the year? Nine. 9 over 12, uh -huh. 5.28 times 9 over 12, 3.96. And then we say that after every share transaction, you sum up. Give me ordinary share, give me the weighted share. This one will be 33, yeah? that 2.78, and this one will be 0.46. Then we have the bonus. We say that, how do we get the bonus? You just take 5.5, you minus 5.28, or you take one over five times 27.5. The issue price was 120, but the market price was 120. So there was a bonus of how many shillings? Five over 125. Yeah, it's the same as taking 5.5, you raise the share deemed issued at full price. And you get 0 0.2, 2, 2, right? Yeah, 0 0.22. Then we said that the share issued at no consideration are not weighted. All together. So how do you do that? So you'll take this, you multiply by this, you divide by that. Good. 0 0.21. After every share transaction, you sum up. And you have 30? 33. And here we have that 1.667. Number three, the convertible preference share was issued in the year 2015. One convertible preference share is entitled to one new ordinary share. That's what we call a potential dilutive ordinary share because that one does not, we never issued any share. Number four, meanwhile, on 1st April 2018, the company granted its employee an option to buy 4 million ordinary share at a strike price of 120 per, per share. No employee had exercised their right by that first December 2018. The average market price of the ordinary share during the year 2018 was 120. Yeah, that's the share option. So that's another potential ordinary share. The corporate tax rate was that. So I think we are through with waiting of share. So with that, let's go to the required. Required. Basic EPS for year 2017 and 20. So how do we get, we say that, how do we get the basic EPS? We say that to get the basic EPS, you take the earnings at about one and shareholders. And how do you get that? You take profit after tax, you raise preference, dividends, you divide by the weighted number of what? Yeah, weighted ordinary shares. So we have two years here. We have 2017 and we have 2018. We are given the income statement extract. And we are given profit after tax. 2017 was how much? Yeah, it was 450. And 2018 we have 650. Then you raise preference. You raise 
preference dividends. And we had two preference shares. Can you see 8% redeemable preference shares? 8% preference shares. And the interest is? So you'll take 8% of 1,000. How much is it? 80, also to wait the same, same, eh? 80. Then we have 10% convertible preference share. We never converted any. So that means all of them will qualify for full dividend. Are you together? Yeah, we have 10% convertible preference share. So you take 10%, how much is nominal value? 500. That means you get 50, 50. So can we now get the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders? Attributable to ordinary shareholders. For 50 minus 130, you get 320. Uh -huh. 520. So let's compute basic EPS. 2017, 2018. So you'll take the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders. Here is 320. 2018 is 520. You divide by the weighted number of ordinary shares. So here we have done for 2018. So the weighted number of share for 2018 is how much? That 1.6. What about 2017? Yes, 20. Are you together? Yeah, the share at the beginning was the share at the end of the last year. You divide by 20. Is that 16? 16, eh? What about this? 16 point? Yeah, 16.42. Number two, number two. Diluted EPS for year 2017 and 2018. So in this case, they want for two years. So what would you say about the diluted EPS? For diluted EPS, number one, you have to identify the potential ordinary shares. And I gave you the examples of potential ordinary shares. And I said there were four. One was the convertible preference share, convertible debenture of convertible own stock, uh -huh. bonus element in future right issue and the bonus element in the share option, those four. So what do we have based in our question? Number one, we have convertible own stock, right? We had convertible loan stock. Also we had what? Convertible preference. Convertible preference share. And also we had what? We made our share option. Are you together? Bonus element in share option. Bonus element in share option. Uh -huh. So let's start with the first one. And we start with the year 2017. We are told you get deleted for the two years. So 2017. We start number one with convertible loan stock. Once you identify the potential ordinary share, you need to compute the incremental EPS for each potential ordinary share. And now do we get incremental EPS? You say that to get the incremental EPS, you take incremental what? Don't remember. Incremental profit, you divide by incremental. Incremental shares so let's start with the convertible loan stock let's go to note number two the convertible loan stock was issued on first july 2017 how many months end of the year can you engage your fingers from first july to december six months are you together so that means they entitled to an interest you see, it was issued during the year 2017. So you'll have to wait that. So that means incremental profit in this case will be the interest payable to them. And remember, you said that interest on the debt is always arable for, for tax. So can we go back to the statement? How much was loan stock? It's 10%. Are we there? And how much was the amount? 15 you multiply by 0 0.7. See number four, you are told, you are, number five, you are given the corporate tax rate is 30. We say that the interest on loan is arable for tax. So you take one minus T, which is 0 
seven, but was issued six months to the end of the year? Six over 12. So that means we're eligible for interest of how much? 150 times 0 0.7, then you divide by two, you get? 52.5. So the incremental profit, if they are converted to ordinary share, would be 52.5. You divide by the incremental shares. Uh -huh. How much is the incremental shares? Let's go back to note number two again. The convertible on stock was issued on 1st July, 20, uh, July 2017. Each shilling 1,000 loan stock is convertible into 20 ordinary and uh, 25 ordinary shares. So we get the incremental shares. For every shilling 1,000, you get 25. Right together. What about? What about? Not 300. What about 1,500? Is equivalent to how much? The 300 was converted in the year 2018. We are computing the diluted EPS for 2017. 2017. You get that seven point. Then you multiply by, remember, it was issued six months to the end of the year. Six over 12. 18.75. So that means we convert them to ordinary share. We'll have to issue how many shares? 18.75. So you divide by 18.75. So how much the incremental EPS? Sorry? 2.8. Now, my question is, is it diluted or undiluted? Yeah, we say that we just compare. How much is the EPS for 2017? 16, eh? So 2.8 is less than 16. So this was what we call a diluted EPS. Number two. We have convertible preference shares. Convertible preference shares. So we compute the incremental EPS. Uh -huh. Preference share, you should do pay them how? What? Dividends. Are we together? So if we convert them, that becomes the incremental profits. And 2017, how much was the preference dividend? But in this case, remember, you're only looking at the convertible preference share. Are you together? Not redeemable preference share. Convertible. It was 10% of 500, which was 50. Are you together? Yeah. This is what we computed here. For the convertible, it was 10% of 500, which is 50. What about the number of shares? Note number three. The convertible preference share was issued in the year 2015. So that means for 2017 has been outstanding the entire year. One convertible preference share is entitled to a new ordinary. One preference share, you get one ordinary share. So let's go to the preference share. What do we have? <laughs> we have five. Eh? For every one preference share, you get one ordinary. How many preference shares do we have? 500 is 500 divided by 100, which is 5. Eh? That means for every 5 you get, so x will be 5. So the incremental share will be 5. 50 divided by 5? 10. Diluted or anti diluted? Yeah, it's still diluted. You see, in this case, our basic EPS was 16, but our incremental EPS is 10. So even that one is diluted. Then we had bonus element in the share option. Will that affect? Let's see if it will affect 2017. Uh, let's go to note number four. Meanwhile, on 1st April 2018, the company granted its employee the option to buy four million. That was 2018. That one does not affect the EPS for 2017. Quite what to talk the diluted EPS. Do you somehow to get the diluted EPS? We just come back here to 2017. How much was the EPS? Uh, how much was the earning attribute of owner shareholders? We had 320. And the weighted shares were how much? 20, are we together? Then we add the first potential ordinary share was a convertible on stock. And the incremental profit was 52.5. And then the incremental shares was 18.75 18 plus plus. Also the convertible preference share they are diluted. The profit will increase by 50, but shares will increase by Five. So can you give me that?
forgetting nine point six six. Let's go twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Still, we have the three potential ordinary share. The first one is what we compute the incremental EPS still for each potential ordinary share, and we have convertible loan stock. Convertible loan stock. Uh huh. We get the incremental EPS. How much would be the incremental EPS? You take the incremental earnings. So loan stock, you should do pay them what? The interest. Are you together? So if you convert them, we'll not pay them the interest. And here we had the interest. 10% of 15 times 0. Point. So in this case, it will be a interest. You just take 10%. Are you together? Of what? Not 15. 1200. So they 300 converted. Now, actually, they converted at the beginning of the 2018. Are you together? Yeah. And actually, if you look at the balance sheet, can you go to the balance sheet text chart or the capital structure? Can you see 10% convertible on stock? 2018 is how much? Yeah, it was 15, but a holder of 300 converted them at the beginning of 2018. Are you together? Kabaki and Gapi? 1200. So the interest for that financial year will be 10% of 1200. Then we say that they are allowable for tax purposes. Are you together? You multiply by 0 0.7. That means they'll be outstanding for the entire 2018. We are not apportioning 6 over 12. So we did for 2017. What do you get? 120 divided by 0 0.7, you get 80? 84. So incremental profit will be 84. What about incremental shares? We are told that for every shilling a thousand, you get how many dollar shares? 25. Are you together? What about 1200? It will be equivalent to how many shares? That, yeah? Yes, so the incremental share will be 30. So 84 divided by that, you get 2.2. 2. 8. See, that one is what? So now compare the basic EPS for 2018. And the basic EPS for 2018 was 16.42, but incremental EPS is 2.8. It's less than the basic EPS. So that one still is what? Yeah, it's dilutive. Then the second one. So can you take a screenshot of that? Yes, I mean a screenshot. Eh?
So let's go to the second convertible. That's for 2018. Again, we had convertible preference here, right? So convertible preference shares. Uh huh. Do you have anything that will change? I think we'll change for con the one we had here eh? that the incremental EPS. Incremental EPS. Let's go ahead and have the convertible preference here. How much was the dividend? Remember, no one converted. Eh? Uh, the dividend was 50. Are we together? The dividend was 50. Then you divide by the incremental share. And the incremental share, this was the term. For every one preference share, you get one ordinary share. What about? five you still get five so that one was not affected so that means the incremental share will be five and you have ten diluted or anti-diluted yeah basic eps remember for 2018 was 16.42 so this one is diluted and lastly we have the bonus element bonus element in the right issue and i show you how to get the bonus Remember to get the bonus share, you take the market price per share minus the exercise price so that you get the bonus. You divide by the market price per share times the number of share, shares or the number of options. Let's go to note number four. On 1st April 2018, how many months at the end of the year? Nine. But remember for the share option, the bonus element are not, are not weighted. So that's how, the way we did for convertible road stock, six over 12, for bonus element, we don't wait them. So meanwhile, on 1st April 2018, the company granted its employee the option to buy 4 million ordinary share at a strike price of 120. No employee had exercised their rights on that 1st December 2018. The average market price for ordinary share during the year 2018 was how much? 125. The stock price is 120, but the market price is 125. There is a bonus of how much? Five. So you'll take five over the market price, which is 120. Five, and they were given how many share option to buy four million so how much will be the bonus shares incremental share will be 0 
Therefore, incremental, remember you see that incremental EPS for share option is always equal to what? Zero, because there is no incremental profit, are you together? So incremental profit is always zero, but the share you have to increase by 0 0.16. So actually, more the upper that the incremental EPS for share option, it's always what? Always equal to zero. So with that, now we can get the diluted EPS for 2018. Just get the basic EPS. And for the basic EPS for 2018, the profit was 520. And the weighted shares we had was that 1.67 plus plus. The first potential ordinary share was the convertible on stock where the profit will increase by eight, but the share increased by 30. So you add 84, you add 30 plus plus. We have convertible preference share. The profit will increase by 50, but the shares will increase by five. And lastly, we have share option. The profit will increase by zero, but we have to issue a bonus share and happy 0 0.16. So give me the diluted EPS. You get 9.79. So we can take a screenshot of that. Once we are through with that, I want us to try another one. Can you be open December 2017, question 4B?
Now let's do that. So the following information related to sugar serve limited for the year ended that first May 2016. Now the question is, I told you in case you want to get a EPS well, know when the year ending, when the year is starting. And if the year ended on that first May, so that means the year started when? Good. Waiting of shares. We have the date. Share transaction, number of shares. We weight them, we get weighted shares. So the net profit of the company for the period attributable to the preference shareholders and owner shareholders of the company was 14.6. That's the same as profit after tax. Information on ordinary share was as follows. So we have said that if the year ends on that first May, that means started on 1st of June 20, 2015. Are you together? So ordinary share of shillings 10 each issued as at 1st Jan uh, June 2015. So we have balance brought down we had how many shares six six million those are the ordinary shares right yes each at five so ordinary share was that uh -huh. was it no it's not shillings eh? those are shares are you together so it's six million the weight will be 12 over 12 and you get six can you work with millions so we'll have six million you wait still you get Six million. Then ordinary share issued on first September 2015 at full price. First September. First September. How many months end of the year? Nine months. Eh? Yes. <laughs> Nine months. Eh? So the year ends on first. Okay, no problem. No problem. Number uh, number two, you do that. The average market price of the share for the year and that first May 2016 was 100, and the closing price of the share as at that first May 2016 was 110. On first January 2016, 300 partially paid ordinary share of shillings 10 each were issued. They were issued at uh, shillings 80 per shares with 40 payable on first January 2016 and 40 payable on first January 2017. Dividend participation was 50% until fully paid. Let me check number three. Convertible on stock of shillings 20 million at an interest rate of 5% per annum was issued at par on 1st April 2015. Mm -hmm. Half year interest was payable on that in September and that first March each year. Each shilling a thousand of the loan stock was convertible at the holder option into 300 ordinary share at any time. So that's one of the potential ordinary shares. Shillings 5 million of the loan stock was converted on, uh, into ordinary shares on 1st April 2016, when the market price per share was 100 per share. Number four, shillings 1 million of convertible preference share of shillings 10 each were issued on in the end of that first May 2012. Dividend were to be paid half year on that in November and that first May at the rate of 6% per annum. The preference shares were convertible 
into ordinary shares at the option of the preference shareholders on the basis of two ordinary shares for each preference share issue. Order of 600 preference share, convert them into ordinary share on 1st December 2015. Number five, corporate tax rate was 30% required. Basic EPS. Number two, diluted EPS. Apo mere wani. You see, an exam will not be with you <laughs> to, to spoon feed you <laughs> how to, to account for it. Eh? So by now, you must be having some points. Remember, in this case, when you're waiting for the share, only focus on the share that were issued. So, so don't focus on the share that are potential. Are you together? You only focus on the share that were issued. So let's go back to number two. Information of ordinary share was as follows. Ordinary share of shilling 10 each issued as at 1st June 2015. That's at the beginning of the year. Then we had ordinary share issued on 1st September 2015. On 1st September 2015, we should share at full price. So we had issue at full price. How many shares we issued? 1.2. How many months end of the year? From 1st September to May 2016. Nine months. So you take nine over 12. Is it 900? 900 and then we see that after every share transaction you sum up so we have 7.2 share and here we have 6.9 good and then <laughs> number three number three comes before number two yeah? convertible on stock of shillings 20 million at an interest rate of five percent was issued at par on first april 2015 Half year interest was payable on that of September and that first March each year. Each shillings a thousand of their own stock was convertible at the holder option into 300 ordinary share at any time. Shillings 5 million of their own stock was converted into ordinary share on 1st April 20. How many months end of the year? That's two, eh? when the market price of the share was added per share. Are you together? Uh -huh. But number two, can you still go to number two, the last paragraph? The average market price of the share for the year ended that first April, uh, that first May 2016 was 100, and the closing price for the share as of that first May 2016 was 110. On first January 2016, so which one comes before? The first January, yeah? Yeah, on first January 2016, how many months end of the year? Five months, eh? 300 partially paid ordinary share of shilling 10 each were issued. So on 1st of January 2016, partially shares. Uh -huh. Then we are told that on 1st January 2016, 300 partially ordinary share of shilling 10 each were issued. They were issued at 80 per share with 40 payable on 1st January 20. That means it's paid immediately together. Yes, we showed them on 1st January 2016. Or 40 payable on 1st January 2016. And the balance of 40 payable on 1st January 20. In the next, remember 1st January 2017 is after one year. Eh? The other financial years. Dividend participation was 50. So now let's be here. Now you will take how many shares do you should? 300,000. Are you together? Times 40 over 80. Are you together? So that means the share that were deemed fully paid, you take 300 times what we received over the full market price. Are you together? So how many shares? 150. How many months at the end of the year? That's how you treat partially paid shares. Are you together? How many months? 5 over 12. You get 62? Yeah, 62,500. Yeah, you only get us at 7350. And this one will be 69, 62, 500. Then the balance of 40 will be paid in the next financial year. See, Atutaki, we just need for 2016. 2016, good. Number three. The convertible on stock of shillings 20 million at an interest rate of 5% per annum was issued at pound 1st April 2015. 
half year interest was payable on that of September and that first March 20, uh, on that first March each year. Each uh, shillings a thousand of their own stock was convertible at the holder of op uh, holders option into 300 ordinary share at any time. Then shillings 5 million of their own stock was converted into ordinary share on 1st April 20. 1st April 2016. How many months are another year? Two months. There was conversion of what? Conversion of loan stock. What was the term? For every shillings, a thousand, you get how many ordinary share? You get 300 ordinary share. Not 3,000, but 300. Then you have to that hold of a holder of shillings 5 million converted them. A holder of shillings 5 million converted them. If for every 1,000 you get 300 dollars a share, that means for 5 million they got how many shares? 15? 1.5, right? Then how many months are under the year? 2 over 12. So how much is the weighted number of shares? Sorry? 200 and 250. After every share transaction, we say that you sum up. Here we'll have it's 88.50, right? What about this? This is the most important. 70? 72? 12? 72, 12, 500. And we never issued any other share. The rest was for conversion. Eh? Mm. No, number four. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's okay. We have realized that. Number four. <laughs> shillings, one million of convertible preference share of shillings 10 each were issued in the year under that first May 20? 12. Dividend were to be paid half year on that year, November, and that first May at the rate of 6% per annum. The preference share were convertible into ordinary share at the option of the preference share holders on the basis of two ordinary share for each preference share issued. Holder of shilling 600 preference share converted them into ordinary share on 1st December 20. Now I notice that. Eh? Good. So on 1st of December 2015, how many months are under the year? December, January, February, March, May. There are six months. Eh? So there was conversion of preference shares. Conversion of preference share. What was the term? For every? The preference share are convertible into ordinary share at the option of the preference share holder on the basis of two ordinary share for each preference. Share for one preference share, you get two ordinary. Then you are told that a holder of 600 shilling 600 preference share, those are shillings. Are you together? Yeah, if for every one preference share, you get two ordinary share. Then a holder of shilling 600 preference share. How much was the power value? Do some of your on shillings one million of convertible preference share of shillings 10 each. So it's 600 shillings. You divide by 10. Are you together? So that means how many preference share? 60,000 will be equivalent to how much? Is it 120? Yes, 120. How many months? Six over 12. And you get 60,000. Then after every share transaction, we see that you sum up. So here you have 73, 20. Here you have 69, 60. And then Number what? There is that what we affected on 1st January. Eh? Then on 1st January 2016, note number two. We have the partially paid shares. Eh? Yes, yes, it'll be 10 partially paid shares. And we should have how many shares? 300 times 40 over 80. And you had how much? 150. How many months end of the year? Five months, five over 12. Did you go in a quick and got 72? No. 62, 500, right? 62, 500. Then let's sum up. 
this one will be 74, 70, now this one will be 70, 500. Uh -huh. Then on first, number three, on first April 2016, that's two months to the end of the year, we had conversion of loan stock. Conversion of loan stock. What was the term? For every shilling a thousand, you get 300. Then a holder of, yes, a holder of 5 million converted with them. Is that 1.5? Yeah, yeah, it was coming to 1.5, then 2 over 12. And you get 250. Was it 250? Yeah, it was 250. Good. So give me that. This one, it's 72. 72. 500. What about this? Seven. Yeah, 897. So we have waited for the shares. That's how you eat the shares. Required. Required number one is the basic EPS. So can we get the basic EPS? To get the basic EPS, do we have the profit after tax? Yes, let's read number one. The net profit of the company for the period attributable to the preference shareholders and ordinary shareholders of the company was how much? 14.6 million. Then you raise preference. Dividends. Do you have previous dividends? Yes. Number what? Number four. On uh, shillings, one million of convert preference of shillings 10 were issued in the year that first May 2012. Dividend were to be paid half year on 30th November and that first May at the rate of 6% per annum. So that's the year. Can you be able to pay the dividend for the year? It will take 6% of 1 million times 6 over 12 plus 6%. Okay, let's be here. So you see we converted, let's be here. There was conversion of preference share and we had to do that. A hold of sharing 600, are we together? Converted them. How many months end of the year? So that means the preference dividend you are getting, let me make it easier for you. We have for the first six months, are we together? For the first six months, and then for the last six months. So the interest rate was how much? The dividend rate was, can you read number four again? Shillings, one million of convertible preference of shillings 10 each were issued in the year in that first May 2012. Dividend were to be paid half year on that of November and that first May at the rate of 6% per, per annum. The preference share are convertible into ordinary share at the option of the preference share holders on the basis of two ordinary share for each preference share issued. Holder of shilling 600 preference share converted them. That was six months end of the year. So the interest rate you take 6%, 1 million, six over for the first six months. Then for the last six months after conversion, it's 6%, a holder of 600 converted. So the remaining is how much? 400 for the last six months. months. So that is 60, is it 30? Or how much do you get? That is 30 or 0 0.3, no. Just work with the millions. Mm -hmm. What do you get here? 6% of 1 million, is it 60,000? Can you give me the profit attributable to one shareholders? Fourteen five fifty eight. So our basic EPS will be fourteen five five eight 
you divide by the weighted number of shares. How many are the weighted shares? 72, 72, 500? 500. So what do you get? Two. You get two. Number two. Number two. A diluted EPS for the end of that first May 20? 16. What's the first step in the diluted EPS? You identify the potential ordinary? Shares. So let's identify the potential ordinary shares. What have you seen? Yeah, we have convertible loan stock. Also, we have convertible preference shares. What else? You want to share option what? Where? There's no share options. The only two convertible on stock and convertible. Brief. Have you have any other? You don't have any other. Uh -uh. You don't have any other. Eh? Yes. Good. So let's start with the convertible on stock. Once you identify the potential ordinary share, you compute the incremental EPS for each potential ordinary. Share so let's get incremental EPS and how do we get the incremental EPS? You say that you take incremental, yeah, incremental profit, you divide by the incremental incremental shares. So convertible on stock. Did we convert any old stock? Yes, there was conversion. Eh? So incremental profit, we need to compute what the interest. Now let's be here. Under the weighted, there was conversion of loan stock. How many months end of the year? Two. Two. Whatever interest, we have the interest for the first 10 months and the interest for the last two months. Are you together? So that means the interest will be, let's go to note number what? Note number three. Eh? Convertible loan stock of 20 million at an interest rate of 5% per annum was issued on 1st April 20? 15. 1st April. 1st April. April was one copy. Whatever that was issued end of last financial year together. So that means has been outstanding for the entire year. So it was not issued during the financial year. It was issued in the last financial year. So the interest is 5%, are we there? Uh -huh. Of 20 million times 0 0.7. We say that the interest is arable quarter. You take one minus T. Then you multiply by, now let's be here. During the year, it was converted two months to the end of the year the year so that means the five percent because the interest for the first 10 over 12. then five percent our of five million converted them yes we are told that shillings five million of their own stock was converted into ordinary share on first april 2016. 20 million minus five 15. so for the last two months you take five percent of 15 million times 0 0.7 to over can you give me that the first one is 58 three 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 Maybe give me your calculator. Eight, seven. So one must be wrong. Five, eighty three. And that total interest we have is 670, 833. So incremental profit will be 670, 833. You divide by the incremental shares. So how do we get the shares? What was the term? 
for every for every 1000 you get 300 are you together now this is what you do remember the terms of for every shillings 1000 you get 300 what about shillings 20 million what about angapi You get six million. You raise. We have those which were converted during the year. Are we together? So you raise the weighted. The converted the number of shares was one point five, but the weighted was two feet. You raise the weighted shares. After the conversion, those who are weighted was how much? Two fifty. <laughs> Minus to fifty thousand fifty seven, or or alternatively you can do this. Eh? You see, you take twenty million, you divide by a thousand. See, in short, is for every thousand you get three hundred. Are you together? That's what I'm doing here. It's twenty million divided by a thousand. You multiply by three hundred. Now let's be here. We converted them two months to the end of the. Year. So that means here you take. 10 over 12 plus they converted five million, five million, a holder of 5 million converted. Is it about 15? So you take for the last two months, you take 15 million, you divide by a thousand. You multiply by two over and you get 5750. Those are two options you can use whenever you converted them. Yeah? You take, you can either decide to take for every 1,000 is equals to 300. What about 20? You get all the convertible. Are you together? Then you raise those which were converted, but you take the weighted share. Yeah. Weighted shares. So, so that means the incremental share is how much? 57. 50. So how much is the incremental EPS? So you take 670, 833 divided by the answer, and you get 0 0.12. It's much dilutive. Are you together? Yes. Uh -huh. So that one potential ordinary share. Munashika <laughs> kitwa mamshiki. Here in option, it have to come. So you better get something. Eh? Good. Let's go to the other potential ordinary share. That was the convertible only stock. Now we go to convertible preference. Share. Convertible preference shares. We compute incremental EPS. Preference share issuers to pay them what? Did we convert them? Yes, there was conversion of preference shares. Six months to the end of the day. So that means when getting the dividend, actually that's what we did here. Six pass, I mean, so we had converted them, I computed them. How much was it? <laughs> the dividend we took 6% of 1 million for the past six months. Are you together? We got 30. 6%. Remember, holder of 600 converted. So the remaining was how much? 400 for the last six months. So that means if we convert them, how much was the interest for the, I mean, the dividend for the period? It's 42. So we already know if we convert them, how to tell a dividend? 42. What about incremental shares? What was the term? Convertible preference share. For every one uh, preference share, you get two ordinary. What about? Was asked. So for every one preference share, you get two ordinary share. How many preference shares we have in full in total? A hundred. It was shillings one million each at ten. Are you together? So you had how many preference share? A hundred thousand. Are you together? What about a two hundred? Is it two hundred? Two hundred. You raise. Converted weighted. Are you together? Converted. Remember, we have the one we converted during the year. So let's be here. So it was 120, but those weighted was how much? Six. Or you use the other way. Which one is easier? You just deduct what you converted. Are you together? Yes. Or you can still do this. Eh? For everyone, you get two. 
for the first six months, you take what about one million? Itakuwa ngapi? Are you there? I mean, one hundred itakuwa ngapi? Then what you get, you multiply by six over twelve. Then you go to the other form. For everyone, you get two. What about forty? It will be equal to how much? And then you multiply by six over two. Where she kai yara isi? So the incremental shares will be one forty. So can you give me the incremental EPS? Yes, don't give up. Eh? <laughs> With revision, you will understand. You're getting 0 0.3. Diluted or lunch diluted? Diluted. I'm going to a lot of energy. I'm going to give you a lot of energy. So that one is diluted. So now we can compute the diluted EPS. How do we get the diluted EPS? Just come to your basic EPS and the profit was how much? Under the basic EPS, the profit was 14,558,000. You divide by the shares was, we had 72,72,500 plus plus. We had one of the potential ratio was the convertible on stock. And the profit was increasing by how much? 670, 833, and the shares were increasing by 57.50. Plus, plus. We also had convertible preference shares. So the profit is increasing by how much? 42, and the shares are increasing by 140. And that's how you get the incremental APS. Can you compute that? And once you complete that, you take a screenshot. Eh? I come with do another one.
We'll do some question now from the handout. Handout question three, page three. Handout question three, page three. I have some, we have some revision question there under the EPS topic. ABC Limited reported profit after tax of shillings 1.8 for the year ended that first March 2015. The profit included a loss of 280 in respect of discontinued activities. The share capital on 1st April 2014. So that means the year end starts on 1st April 20. That means the year will end on it will end on March, right? 2015? 2015. Good. The share capital as at 1st April 2015 was as follows. 1 million shillings, 1 per value ordinary share. So for the number of ordinary share, we had a balance brought down of 1 million. At the beginning of the year, we had this 12 over 12, and we get 1 million. Then we had 8%, 500 shillings one per value convertible preference shares. The following share transaction occurred during the year. On 1st October, 2014, how many months end of the year? Remember the year ends on May, on March. Are you together? Ends on March. How many months? Six, right? Good. On 1st October 2014, a holder of 300 convertible preference share converted them into equity share in the ratio of two ordinary share for every three preference. So we had conversion of preference shares. And the term was for every three, every three preference share you get <laughs> all. Yeah, for every three preference share you get two ordinary shares, right together. And a holder of 300 converted them into ordinary share. That means you got how many ordinary share? The 200. 200. How many months at the end of the year? Six over 12, and you get 100. Good. So after every share transaction, you sum up, right? Number two, on 1st November, 1st of November 2014, how many months are of the year? Five months. The company made a share split of two equity share for every one equity share held as 1st November 20. So effected a share split. Share split is one of the example of the share issue that no consideration. Who split in Kupanya Nini? You multiply or you divide? No, divide, you consolidate. This one is split. 
Good. You multiply by two, don't divide. Divide is when you are doing consolidation. Are you together? Split is when one share becomes two. Are you together? That's what we call splitting. So in this case, you need to know where to multiply, where to divide. Divide. Come on, you could split the talk share mingi. You multiply by you multiply by two as simple as that. Is it a tokashi and Yes. Either talk and gap. Good. Then lastly, on 1st December 2014, how many months are end of the year? 1st of December 2014. How many months are end of the year? Four. That's December, January, February, March. The company made a right issue. We said that whenever you have a right issues, we have those share deemed issued at, at full price, and you have those deemed issued at a what? At a bonus. And we are told that. On 1st December 2014, the company made a right issue of one equity for every five. So let's be here. It's one for every, you take one over five, you multiply by the number of shares. How many do you want? Two point. Not to me, I hear. Are you together? It's one for every, in short, it's for every five, you get one. What about 24? You get how much? Are you together? Then you multiply by. The company made one equity share for every five share held at an exercise price of 12.5. The come right price was how much? 20. So you multiply by 12.5, but the market price before the right issue was how much? 20. So how many share were deemed issued at full price? 300. Then you wait. How many months end of the year? Four over 12. It was on 1st December. What do you get? That is 100. And then after every share transaction, you sum up. So you have is 20, 2.7, and here you have is 2.3. Then we have bonus shares. You take one over five times 2.4. We showed the shares 12.5, but the market price was 20. So that means there's a, a bonus of how much? 7.5, you divide by 20? 20. One, one eighty. Then the share issued and non-consideration are not weighted. This is how you argue. If two point seven, they got a bonus of one eighty. Two point three, they get a bonus of how much? So you take one eighty times twenty three divided by twenty seven or two seventy. Yeah? Two point seven. One fifty three. Three three three. Average share transaction you sum up. This one you have is twenty eight, eighty, and here you have is twenty four. 53, 3, 3, 3. Good. Required. Required. Compute the basic EPS in respect of continuing operation and the entity as a, as a whole. Can you read the first statement again? We are told that ABC Limited reported a profit after tax of 1.8 for the year at that first March 2015. The profit include loss of 280 in respect of discontinued. Yeah, we don't record we don't report the discontinued operation. So in this case, let's separate that. We have continuing operation. And we have the discontinued operation. And then you get the entity as a whole. Entity. Let's compute the EPS for each for the continuing, discontinuing, and the entity as a whole. We start with the profit after tax. Eriku Angapi. 1.8. And that was the total. Are you together? So for the entry reported a profit of 1 point, of which this included yeah, a loss of 2.8 from discontinued operation. Is that the uh, truth? So it's 2.8, which is the loss. So how much was the continuing operation profit? So deduct that. You are getting how much? Eight, sorry? 15? Very long. Yes, 28, good. That my student. Others are not my student. <laughs> now, if you reported our 1.8, of which this 1.8 include a loss of 280, you are not told that it included a profit. If it was a profit, you just left to wait to get the profit from operation. So that means, can you, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you take 2080? 
you add a lot of 280, maybe come out about 1.8. Yes. Are you getting 1.8? Hey, have you confirmed? You're getting how much? And now, 15, 30, 15, 20, good. Then, once you get the profit after tax, you raise preference dividends. We had preference dividends. Eh? You cannot pay. Remember, in this case, you don't factor in for this continue. You don't factor in for the continuing. Yeah? Uh, any preference here while discontinue. Now let's go to the capital structure. We are told that the capitals, uh, the share capital of us first April 2014 was as follows. We had 1 million shillings, one per value, ordinary shares, and then we have 8.5, 500 shillings, uh, shillings, one per value, convertible preference share. So that means we usually pay a dividend of 8% of 500 preference shares each at one shilling. So 8% of 500 is how much? 40,000. Yeah, that's a continuing operation. You take it to the total 40. You don't, it will not be affecting the discontinued operations. So this one you get 20, 20, 40. And here you'll be having 17, 16. And we get now the basic EPS because that was the exam entered. The basic EPS will be the profit attributable is 2040, and this one you have is 17, 60. Then you divide by the weighted number of the shares. And the weighted number of the share, that one does not change. Is how much? Yeah, 2453, 2453, So for the continuing, it'll be how much? It should be higher than for the entity. Eh? Zero point? Eight three. What about for the entity as a whole? Should be lower because of the loss of the discontinued operations. Zero point seven. Can take a screenshot of that. I think we can call it a day. Or should we do another question? Uh, let's call it a day. Tafanya Ming in to dilute your what? <laughs> yeah, even when you are revising, Kaide don't dilute that. Eh? So that's the end of EPS. I wish we had time we could have done. Actually, EPS is one of the easiest. But if you understand the concept, eh? if you understand the concept, EPS is one of the easiest. And this one does not miss. Eh? Yeah, so this one does not miss. And what we did yesterday, that's the reconstruction. So in our next session, that's next week. So next week, God willing, we might be having two classes.